Miss America 2018, Kara Munn was a surprise visitor this week. Miss America stopped by the Fort Meade Military Entrance Processing Station, or MEPS, on Wednesday. She was given a brief tour, signed some autographs, and met with some of the recruits. She stayed on to observe the swearing-in and shipping-out ceremony. Hello and welcome to Meade Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, descendants of Fort Meade's original landowners are recognized. November is Military Family Appreciation Month. MWR kicks off the first week with a full slate of events. And we continue our focus on the blended retirement system. But first, a quick reminder from Kibro Ambulatory Care Center. They've received more flu vaccines, so flu shots have resumed. You can get yours October 30th through November 3rd from 8.30 to 3.30 at the McGill Training Center. Remember, you're not eligible for these shots if you're enrolled in the Johns Hopkins U.S. Family Health Plan. Elsewhere, Fort Meade has been celebrating its 100th anniversary all year. Celebrations continued last weekend at the Epiphany Episcopal Chapel in Odenton. On Saturday, six descendants of some of Fort Meade's original landowners were recognized for their family sacrifice. We wanted to make sure that we didn't forget the people whose land made up Camp Meade who, and who rather abruptly, uh, when a decision was made in June to put a camp here, by July, construction began, so people didn't have a whole lot of time to vacate their homes. Uh, their crops just were left in the field. There were approximately 30 individuals and churches that were displaced in 1917. Carl Ree's father and grandfather owned 172 acres that eventually were sold to the government in 1941. Reeve was a key figure in researching the names and plots of land of the original owners. He says he learned a lot and wants to do more research. There were some little communities that were, you know, like a lot of communities where houses were close together, sold lots out of it. There was five of them, actually. Three were big, but it was pretty exciting. I'd like to do some more research and find out whether they were workers up there on the farms or what they were. The site of the celebration picnic, the Epiphany Episcopal Church, was built in 1918 to help meet the spiritual demands of an exploding population. More than 400,000 soldiers passed through Fort Meade during World War I alone. In other news, November is Military Family Appreciation Month, and MWR is kicking off the month with a full first week. On November 6th, they're offering free aerobics classes all day at Gaffney Gym. On the 7th, it's the annual Army-Navy flag football game. The event seems to get a little bigger every year with more food, entertainment for the kids, and great door prizes. A free tailgate starts at 3, the kickoff at 345. On November 8th, stop by Leisure Travel Services and pick up discounted tickets to Cinemark Movie Theaters. The Brass Lounge at Club Meat is offering free chicken wings on Thursday, November 9th from 4 to 8 p.m. Stop by Army Community Service starting November 10th and enter to win a $500 Under Armour gift certificate. And the Lanes is offering free cosmic bowling and hot dogs from noon to 5 on the 11th. For more information, go to www.me.armymwr.com. Meanwhile, Halloween is coming up. Fort Meade got the festivities started a little early this week. The 741st Military Intelligence Battalion staged their annual Trunk or Treat. Started just a few years ago as an organizational event and just a dozen or so decorated cars, this year's event featured more than 100 cars filled with candy. We anticipate it getting bigger every year. Uh, we anticipate continuing this event because it is a great event that uh, families and the community like to get involved with. Um, this year we're incorporating EMS, we're incorporating police, fire um, services, and uh, we're just out here to show that, that uh, we are a family organization, that we really sincerely care about the community. The 741st was recognized last year as Fort Meade's Volunteer Unit of the Year, and Trunk or Treat is just part of their desire to give back to the community. Fort Meade is home to us. Uh, the garrison has done so many things to support our families, our soldiers, and this is just an opportunity for us to give back. Finally this week, starting January 1st, active duty service members with fewer than 12 years of service as of the end of the year will have until December 31st of 2018 to remain in the current retirement system or opt into the new blended retirement system. Here's the latest from the Department of Defense. Hi. So, I got my 214, Social Security card, my passport, a ball in my blood, and ah, my firstborn. Hmm. Choosing to opt into the new blended retirement system is probably easier than you think. No red tape, no blood tests, no firstborn child. Depending on your branch of service, you simply go to one of these designated resources and sign up online. We'll make it easy for you to choose your financial future and hers. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.